exploring the nexus of holography and holophony in visual music composition. In lieu of concision, I will present a greatly simplified overview of my research and creative practice. To that end, we will briefly explore the idea that, owing to their shared three-dimensional nature, holophones and holograms are well suited as mediums for visual music composition. This union is at once ripe with creative opportunity and fraught with challenges in the areas of aesthetical and technical implementation. Though squarely situated upon the bleeding edge of phenomenological research and creative practice, this novel medium is nonetheless within reach. Here, I will provide an overview of the methodological pipeline I have developed that employs the convergence of holography, holophony, and supercomputing toward the creation of visual music compositions. These compositions are intended for head-mounted displays or large-scale 3D 360 projection screens and high-density loudspeaker arrays. Holography and holophony extend well beyond more common 3D approaches. Though definitions for each tend to vary, here holograms are considered stereoscopic projections of virtual three-dimensional visual objects that appear to occupy a common three-dimensional space with the viewer. Holophons are considered their auditory counterparts. The nexus of holography and holophony affords the potential for audiovisual expression that extends well beyond realism into relationships between sight and sound that could not otherwise exist within our normal perceptions of reality. Potentially, multiverses can be alluded to with such environments, uh, thus significantly increasing the potential for deeply immersive experiences. So to explain that, think about a photograph. Clearly a two-dimensional image. It has width, it has height, but there is no depth. It's a flat piece of paper. Nonetheless, when we view a, a photograph, there is an allusion to the third dimension of depth. Now generalize that same type of perspective towards holograms, a three-dimensional or holophones for that matter, a three-dimensional image, and it's uh, we can hypothesize a, the potential for an illusion toward a fourth dimension. Visual music can be described as a meaningful synthesis of the visible and the audible. Relationships between sight and sound are the basis of visual music. In pursuing the development of interactions between the auditory and the visual for this project, several approaches were implemented. Primarily, a choreographic perspective was employed where the objects and the environments are related in terms of movement. Another approach implemented what involves timbral relationships with regard to tone and color. Ultimately, and perhaps as a form of synesthesia, sound existing as light and light existing as sound is the desired effect. Creating these relationships is key to visual music expression. Spatial orchestration is commonplace in the world of electroacoustic music. Further, 3D spatialization is, wide, is becoming widely embraced as the number of practical techniques and availability of venues increases. However, in a practical perceptual sense, to my ears, these types of musical events often seem relegated primarily to the periphery of the venue. My research involves the implementation of a threefold hybrid approach consisting of convolution reverb, high-order ambisonics, and my own version of vector-based amplitude panning. I'll refer to that as RVBAP. Though it has not been tested empirically in this practice-based studies, in this practice-based study, these systems, um, use, using these systems in a unified approach appears to contribute toward an increased perception of velocity. Generative processes, instantiated it to compose the musical aspect of my work, engaged use of C-sound and C-mask, and are largely based upon tendency masks that constrains stochastically generated values intended for the C-sound numerical score. Seen here is a diagrammatic representation of the bottom-up compositional workflow. An aspect of this generative process includes the event-by-event -event implementation of algorithms based upon convolution reverb, 
and RV map, which determine the perceived locations and movements of auditory events. The distance algorithm implements convolution re reverb based upon key peak involved, which is a C sound opcode. Convolution is a mathematical procedure whereby one function is modified by another. Convolution reverb consists of mapping the reverberation signature of an impulse response recording onto another sample. This approach ascribes realistic reverberation characteristics to a sound event as opposed to more conventional forms of, rever of reverberation that approximate them. Uh, convolution reverb provides an enhanced uh, holophonic representation since reverberation is an important auditory cue in the perception of distance. The procedural workflow of the C-Sound Orchestra relies upon the stochastically generated score file to um, determine the parameters of the RVBAP panning algorithm to be implemented. In my C-Sound Orchestra, there are 51 different movement patterns, each of which can be applied to any combination of up to eight loudspeakers. Amplitude panning involves the modulation of an event between two or more loudspeakers. The diagram here illustrates a three-dimensional Cartesian cube existing in the positive quadrants of each dimension. Each axis of the cube ranges from zero to one. An eight-channel loudspeaker system is mapped onto the diagram. You can see them represented, the speakers represented by the black dots in each corner. By referencing this, uh, a set of coordinates within this schema, the perception of the location and movement of a sound event is determined in the C-Sound numerical score. For simplification, an eight-channel example is diagrammed here. However, for this project, a 32-channel approach was utilized. Though similar to the eight-channel configuration, 32-channel diffusion uh, allows for greater spatial resolution, which affords a specific, more specific perception of the temporal location of sound events. Though RVBAP is quite adequate for providing a perception of three spatial dimensions, from my perspective, the quality of the holophonic effect varies from event to event. In order to enhance it further, the final aspect of this approach involves the diffusion of sound events through the implementation of high order ambisonics. So after the 32 channel C sound composition is complete, it um, is diffused for final playback using Max. The final link toward the perception of holophony is approached in this study through the implementation of a patch that was developed utilizing the ICST Ambisonics plugin. Now, high order Ambisonics create spherical sound, field, sound fields to which audio events are directed. Each loudspeaker receives a weighted sum of all of the speakers in a venue, thereby increasing the size of the listening sweet spot and the quality of the sound localization. Fifth order ambisonics is appropriate for 32 channel diffusion. For this work, 32 spherical sound fields are created and arranged in a cuboid pattern in the venue. One of the numer numerous variations I added to the original Max patch was to make the sound fields adjustable with regard to their proximity to the center of the venue. Positioning the spherical sound fields towards the center of the venue increases the overall presence in a composition thus potentially increasing the perception of holophony. Further, I added control over the amplitude levels for each ascending row of loudspeakers. In cases where there are two or more rows in a venue, uh, this allows for precise control toward a balanced relationship between them, uh, which is essential for a relatively equal perception from the listening position. This approach enhances the diffusion of the height dimension, which is the most difficult to perceive. For this research, a stereoscopic approach to 3D visual, the 3D visual work was implemented to create holographic content. The technique involves primarily, uh, the techniques involved primarily rely upon Maya, Adobe After Effects, and Adobe Premiere. The Dome Master 3D plugin for Maya provides a stereo virtual camera rig that calculates 360 degree horizontal by 180 degree vertical imaging. The right eye and the left eye's perspective for each frame of video are rendered at a cumulative resolution of 7,000 by 7,000 pixels. After 
an extensive testing and rendering process, the resultant stereoscopic image sequences are stacked in to a single image sequence using Adobe After Effects in an over-under configuration as demonstrated here. This stack sequence is then imported into Adobe Premiere for final editing and rendering and final rendering. And the following slide is a diagram of the top-down visual composition process. For these compositions, uh, stereopsis is provided the viewer in a virtual sense. The left and the right eye frames are alternately projected at 60 times per second. Active polarized glasses or a head mounted display black out the left and right eye in sync with the pers perspectival frame not currently being projected. This fools the brain into perceiving that it is seeing the images simultaneously in its normal perceptive mode. Uh, which provides the perception of depth. As with the audio compositional process, the generative approach to the creation of, creation of the visual aspect of this work involves mining for the elusive and simultaneously tantalizing properties of emergence. In general, emergence may be described as the effect of the outputs being greater than the sum of the inputs. Something happens something beyond, beyond what one would expect the combination of algorithms we set into motion should be able to produce. To create an environment conducive to emergence, numerous refractions and reflections are integral to the creation of the scene. Um, each ge the geometry of each, though often quite simple, achieves complexity through this process. Together, these elemental components contribute toward, um, dynamically toward the indeterminate behaviors of the renders. However, this process comes at a massive computational cost. For the mental ray renderer in Maya to calculate the huge number of positions and associated parameters for each photon, for each stereoscopic frame of each scene, requires a lengthy rendering process, which necessitates a specialized computational approach. This is often a roadblock to many artists and composers due to the knowledge required and the limited accessibility to alternative computational systems. Rendering high resolution stereoscopic image sequences at 30 frames per second for each scene is impractical for most computer workstations. I would love to be able to render at 60 uh, frames per second, but uh, that's not within my reach uh, currently. Therefore, I began experimenting with supercomputer, supercomputing clusters which implement parallel processing. Building a rock supercomputing cluster, which is a bundle maintained by the computer science department at UCSD, uh, was found effective for the task. With it, one can configure the CentOS operating system specifically for the task at hand, thus eliminating any unnecessary computational overhead. The Sun Grid engine uh, scheduler that a accompanies the ROCKS bundle, allows each node of each CPU to be specifically assigned a rendering task. Though not empirically tested for this practice-based study, informal testing demonstrated an approximate 300% increase in rendering speed as opposed to standard render farms. And, um, and of course, using workstation, there's no comparison. Nonetheless, Rendering the high resolution stereoscopic images for this research and creative practice requires weeks and sometimes months for various scenes depending upon their complexity. Interestingly though, running at 87% capacity, 24-7, 365, the servers utilized have performed flawlessly, making this project feasible. Incidentally, they had a dual function through the winter of the last two winters actually, of providing a lot of extra heat to the house, cutting our heating bill, but we're raising our electric bill for the clusters. The major constituents in the process of, of creating the holophonic and holographic visual compositions have thus far been presented separately as a matter of communicative convenience. In practice, the out of time process occurs nonlinearly. One of the primary activities that guides and catalyzes the process is that of a four-part creative feedback loop. The, the musical, the visual, the high-performance computing processes, in addition to my own sensibilities, each contribute toward a highly effective feedback loop. 
this is the crux of the creative process involved in this project. As demonstrated in this diagram, each aspect of the process involved influences and informs the others. In this manner, a confluence of workflow culminates in what is hopefully a uniquely situated artifact. As previously stated, a choreographic perspective was implemented as a major factor in determining the relationships between audio and visual events. Since each are based upon movement, this is clearly a beneficial stance. However, a more elusive uh, influence is that of synesthesia. Though I'm not a synesthete, generally feelings uh, and audiovisual imagery about the relationships between sight and sound were nonetheless consistently experienced throughout this project. These underlying intuitions, though difficult to describe clearly, were perhaps the most powerful influence in determining the relationships between sight and sound. All right, so in this very brief presentation, I have barely grazed the surface of my exploration into the territory that is the nexus of holophony and holography. However, I hope you've received a sense of the creative potential that lies within. Thank you very much.